Hello, it's Dr. Shelley with Shelley's Nursing Review. And I know that everybody is freaking out about this new test. And I'm gonna offer several videos over the next few weeks about this next generation NGN NCLEX exam. Because I think the more information we share with you, the better. So basically, you gotta stay with me, follow me with the whole, you know, board stuff. So the next generation NCLEX exam starts April 1st. You knew that, right? You knew that April 1st, 2023, both the RN and the LPN are going to be taking this new test. Then you probably have heard already, there is good news and bad news about this next generation NCLEX exam. I'm an optimist, I'm born that way. I like to think positive. So let's start with the positive. The positive includes you're about to get partial credit. Now, I know for the last 20 years of teaching NCLEX that y'all crazy behind used to get an attitude problem because you would do your select all and, oh, I only miss one. I don't know why they couldn't give me no credit. What is that about? Well, they heard your cries and look at this. You get partial credit for a lot of questions on this new next generation NCLEX exam. You get partial credit on case studies. You get partial credit on select dolls. Some of the fancy newfangled test questions you get partial credit with. And so you want to make sure you know what you get partial credit with. Now you're going to hit the subscribe button because I have a lot more to tell you right now and to do that you're going to want to also follow some of the other videos i have to help you in order to pass this next generation nclex exam you're going to need to remember it's different you know long gone are the days of i passed my test in 75 questions and out no boo 85 to 150 questions now if anybody's really known the history of nclex you should feel pretty good with 85 to 150 questions because honey i remember the days when it was 265 questions for the rn and 205 questions for the lpn no matter who you are now it's 85 to 150 questions that's good news because nobody had time anybody had time for that with 265 205 you you were cold you were miserable you were hungry you cried you you just died i mean you know we remember those days so this is a little bit better i think and it goes along with what i've been saying since i've been teaching nclex which is take your time long gone are the one minute per question crap that you learned in school no take your time read read and read again now for this next generation NCLEX exam for you to be successful you got to know about these case studies and don't let it bother you jerry curl okay because there's three there's just three case studies that are going to be part of your scoring these three case studies though will have da -da, six questions each on each case study and it's not just six willy-nilly questions because they were bored with life no they're strategically placed questions to test your clinical judgment now again if you've been in the game as long as i have you remember critical thinking and now you have clinical judgment are this is it just like semantics or is there really a meaning behind both of these critical thinking is just that thinking well we found that nurses who come out of school might know how to think but they sure as hell don't know how to act so clinical judgment is putting you in the scenario of a clinical situation and seeing how your judgment goes with all the things you need to yes think about but yes also do so peep this these six questions will strategically analyze did the nurse recognize the cues number one your second question out of the six for this case study will then see if you analyze the cues. Like, did you even know what it meant when you read this? The third question out of the six, can you prioritize the hypothesis? For example, I may have a pregnant woman with a seriously severe headache and she comes in complaining of swelling of her legs. If you focus on the swelling in the legs and start thinking crazy on steroids, like, oh my God, I gotta get the swelling down, but you didn't address the freaking headache that you walked in with, she's gonna die. 
that's how you prioritize your hypothesis. What's going on with her right now? Then you have generate solutions. So here's what I hope you notice. The first three questions are thinking questions. These last three of the six, doing questions. Like you gotta do, you gotta act upon what you thought. So generating solutions. Okay, what do we think we should be doing with this patient? How about the patient with the headache in pregnancy? We need to make sure that her urine doesn't have protein in it. So we're starting to think about preeclampsia and acting on what we can do to fine tune what is it she's dealing with. Generate solutions. How about take action? How about we put her behind in that bed and don't let her walk anywhere, put those side rails up times four, pat them because we all know a headache and pregnancy that's severe at the third trimester could be a seizure. Take action, okay? Lastly, the last question of the six are going to be where you evaluate outcomes. Is this patient having clonus? Is this patient having any, any deep tendon, any brisk deep tendon reflexes? Is this patient having that headache still? Is the fetal heart rate doing well? Let's evaluate what all we did to save her life and indeed, is she out of the danger zone? You got it. Now, here we go. So that was your three case studies. What you gotta remember about this test is that those three case studies will be given in the first 85 questions. Because again, if they cut you off at 85 and said you're the bomb.com, well, how can they say that if they never gave you their required three case studies? Now, next, moving on. Your select all that apply, I told you it was good news and bad news. Your select all that apply can be as many as 10 options. But again, you get partial credit for the ones you select that are true. How long is the test? Five hours. If you do the math, you basically are averaging 30 questions per hour. That's important. That means take your freaking time. The students in my class who rush and get done fast and, ooh, I get to go on break, their scores suck. The students who take their time, think it through, read the questions, the last five words of the first question, all of that, all the tricks I teach you, their scores are way higher. Now listen, just like all the other tests in the past, 15 pilot questions, which means they're gonna throw out 15 questions. You don't know which ones they are clearly. However, here's a way to think about this. I don't know about you, but if you're like me and you start answering questions and you come up against this question from hell, you've never seen it, you've never heard of it, Dr. Shelley didn't mention it, your little review uh, software didn't say it, there's no handout on it, your school didn't touch it, Say to yourself, uh-uh, y'all not about to get me in a trick bag. Y'all not about to get my panties in a bunch. Y'all not about to let my drawers drop to my ankles. Y'all not about to get my hands sweating, my pit sweating, my bubble guts going in diarrhea. No. Say to yourself, that was a pilot question. I'm not about to be here all day on this pilot question. I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to do my best. But we're going to keep it moving. 14, bad news right here. 14 new types of questions. Well, what are they, Dr. Shelley? Some bull crap. Look, bow tie, trends. I'm coming over here because it's crazy. Clothes? What the hell is clothes? Drop down questions. Sort of like Epic. When you do Epic software at work, it's a lot like that. Extend drag and drops. Enhanced hot spots a matrix or grid type questions, don't ask. 14 new types of questions. So often people say, Dr. Shelley, do you think that this test will be harder or about the same? Well, common sense tells me that whenever NCLEX changes their test, for the first year, the passage rate always drops. That's just research, because you remember I did get that PhD. So that's just point blank research. We know for a fact that the person who takes this new test is going to find it harder because they weren't taught this way of, of um, questions. They weren't taught these types of questions in their nursing school. They weren't taught the way to think 
like this test is trying to get them to think? Of course it's harder. It's harder for other reasons. Some of our biggest issues in society right now is that you guys want everything like a microwave answer. Yeah, that's called YouTube, Google, Twitter, blah, 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 blue, blue, blue. No, boo, you actually have to study. There is no tricks to get you to pass this. Was it decision trees and all the rest of that garbage? No, 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 honey. This is really reading. Reading is fundamental, so vocabulary is even more fundamental. Then, last but not least, and I want you to hear me on this because it's huge. There is increased number of pharmacology and infectious disease questions on this test. And I know why because the med errors that we are seeing, including that nurse, Redonda DeVault, who was down there, I believe in, um, in uh, Virginia at Vanderbilt Hospital or something. The only reason the patient died, if we're honest with each other, is because Redonda DeVault did not know the generic name for Versed. She took Versed, put it in the Pixis, didn't get it, then she decided to use just two letters of the word Versed and put the V and the E. And instead of Versed, she got Vecaronium, the same medicine we used to paralyze you on a ventilator, and even the same medication we use for capital punishment to kill your behind. She put that in the Pixis, got Vecaronium out, didn't stop and think, this ain't no damn Versed. She gave it to the patient and killed the 73-year-old patient. And the patient was not gonna die. Okay, so I need you to know that this is a good thing because it's been my experience that you don't know the generic names of hardly any of these drugs and that when you look at the classroom that I teach every single week, I ask them what's the generic for Versed just to test them and they don't know until I teach them. When they come in here fresh and new and newly graduated out of nursing school, I do think it's something wrong that they don't know the generic name for Versed. I think our schools are failing our students. And we know why. You didn't get no clinicals. You had a pandemic. They canceled all your clinicals. Your teachers quit. You didn't have any good curriculums. They charged you 45,000, 24,000, 68,000, 112,000 to give you a crappy education. And now you're suffering for it. But I got you because right here I got you stay with me remember I have a playlist for everything you ever need all you have to do is go to the playlist of HETV and there it is the case studies I will be doing every single week with you we will get you through this now one more thing the increased infectious disease questions need I go into great detail about how stupid nurses were when it came to COVID, when it came to COVID vaccines, when it came to uh, your, your uh, personal protective equipment, when it came to transmission, when it came to airborne, droplet, contact, standard, you didn't even know the difference, what to wear, when. You put on a mask for your patient with contact, you put on a gown for the patient with droplet, all of which is very wrong. So no doubt this is needed. So don't fight the new test, be ready for the new test. Stay with your girl, I got you, deuces.